Greetings again from David Gillespie and Pumpkin Town Primitives. Uh, today we're on video number three of the gas tank removal. Today's episode, we will be actually taking the gas tank, which I got fresh back from the, um, the radiator shop, and I'll be uh, cleaning it up, painting it, putting it back in the car by the end of this episode. Also, let me say, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the like button down below and help our channel out. So I've got the gas tank back from the radiator shop and they used, I think, a, a product called Red Coat to seal the inside with and the red dye is there so that you can see if it's completely coated. They got a little over exuberant and coated my threads for the gas gauge and for the gas cap. So now I have had the trouble to try to eliminate that without harming the threads. So what I did up here was I used two different products. One was just pure acetone on a Q-tip and it turns it into liquid enough to be able to remove it. Um, the, the gentleman I took my gas tank to, he actually cut two holes in the back of the tank, so that's the side that faces the firewall that you never really see. So he cut two circular holes in the back, and he was able to clean more of the baffles out inside of there with those two holes. And then at the finish, he welded both of those holes shut, and then he used a product called Red Coat, which I've shown in the video already. And he, you know, tumbles it around and it completely coats the inside and it should be ethanol resistant and things like that. So I started out using this clean strip brand of acetone. It just didn't seem to be strong enough. Went back and got this MEK substitute and that seems to be doing a little bit better. Although it's not a very fast process, it does work and I'm just using it on a Q-tip here to kind of come around the rim. And I just have to keep rubbing it back and forth in a small area to keep it saturated. And the evidence that I'm actually producing something is on the tip of the Q-tip. I'm seeing red, so I know that some of that is coming off. So if you just do this for a couple hours, It'll finally come off, and I did use a wire brush, but I'm trying so carefully not to get any particles down in the gas tank, and that's the reason why I'm being very gingerly. I'm wearing gloves, and I'm outside, so this stuff is pretty strong. So just take all precautions you need to eliminate fumigating yourself. Okay, so here on the, the porthole that you put the gas gauge in, you have to make sure that you don't booger up these threads. So once the threads are boogered up, you're really sunk and you may have to replace the whole gas tank. So also my gas tank at the radiator shop got scratched so bad that I'm gonna have to just repaint it. So right now I'm taking it down to about a 150 grit to get all the big chunky scratches out and it needed it anyway, and I'll paint it all. So, uh, so anyway, I'm just working it back down after that. I've got all the threads clean of that red coat, thankfully. So now it's just a matter of um, sanding it, repainting it, and hopefully putting it back in. Fun fact before I cover all this up is the uh, history of this car of mine in paint. So here's bare metal. And then this looks like this would have been the primer from 1930 because right above that is the actual color of the car, which you can also see here on the cow band area. So this color and this color are the same. That was the original color of my car, which I think was a thorn brown. So looks like it went from bare metal to this primer in a brown color. Then the actual color of the car, which stayed that way probably from the 30s to the 50s and then this blue color was what the car was painted 
unless that was the primer for this color, which is the color that I bought the car in, which is like a shickled drab, I think, of some sort. So it's not as brown as the original color, but I like it, and that's the color we're gonna go back with. So the progression of the car in colors. So around the edges where it was rusted real bad, I used the Osvo product to kind of kill that rust. And so everything is been awesome. Okay, so now it doesn't look too pretty, but it's been sanded and uh, down to a 400 grit. And I've got uh, it ready to uh, prime, Lord will. Okay, so three coats of primer, two light coats and one wet coat later. I'm getting ready to sand it from a 400 grit up to a six and then an 800. And... Uh, and then get started on our first base coat of base. Not too shabby. So three coats of paint and one coat of clear later we're getting closer i missed some spots because it was a little dark in here so i've got to go and put my second coat on the top we've got i think two coats on the front here now <laughs> I finally got the final coat onto the gas tank of paint. And I'm getting ready to try to reinstall. Before I reinstall the uh, gas tank, I had uh, some leakage up here. And I'm going to need to get some of this rust off here. And this little ledge right here with some um, sandpaper prime and maybe paint that before I put that back on to keep that from rusting someday. And also, I've got this little patch that I just forgot about. So I'll need to sand that and paint that. My good I mean, buddy Bill at Imperial Products in Easley, South Carolina, hooked me up with this sander here that uh, can detach. This is just a Velcro that sticks this on. So I've got a nice little pad that I can come in and change out the, uh, the grits of sandpaper on there and do body work that can conform to a lot of little tight spaces. So as you can see, the old gasket material is still present there. Looks like we have some amateur militia starting up down the road. Get some of this rust and crud off of here and maybe put a little phosphoric acid on it to keep the rust from continuing. A little tiny wire brush to get in here. I'm gonna put a light coat of Osvo, which is phosphoric acid, on those surfaces. Helps to prepare it for paint and keeps it from rusting any further. Now to begin the process of putting the tank back into the car. So I've done a little touch up paint on these areas here for what it's worth. And there are two types of uh, anti-squeak tape that can go along here. Um, a lot of people on the MAFCA group recommended the cloth friction tape. I only could find this at Ace Hardware, but it's basically what you put on baseball bats and things like that so it's not sticky on this side but it is on that side and i think that's what i'll go with 
but they um, sell at the suppliers this kind of uh, webbing here for that same purpose, which is thicker, but I feel like it's a better quality product, but it doesn't have any stick to it. So I think I'm gonna go with the anti-friction tape from Ace Hardware. Stuff has a pine tar smell about it, so that'll go well for you baseball fans and George Brett fans in particular. Another reason I want to use this is because this is the exact same stuff that came off of it that I pulled off. So I've heard on the Mafka group on Facebook that this is what was used originally. I can't vouch for that, but that makes some sense as it's what I pulled off. Next, it'll need a strip along this uh, portion here of the frame that connects the frame right along the edge of that. Okay, so next out here on the tank, I have found that to paint the tank, a pair of saw horses worked really good <laughs> to keep it off the ground and keep it off the table. But next, you're looking for this welting comes from the suppliers. I got mine from Smith & Jones, Davin Smith down in Columbia, South Carolina. So you'll actually start, from my understanding, even with the front of the where the tank goes to the firewall right there. And then you'll use... Uh, clothespins. So I've just got the first clothespin in place there, looks like that. Then as you get to the curve, according to Les Andrews in his red book, the best thing to do is just take a pair of scissors or snips and cut uh, about like that every inch or so, so that it curves and s snugs up against there just like that. Okay, so now who would have thought that you would need a clothespin to help restore a Model A4, but that does seem to be the case. So now I'll lay this along the back here and then get ready to cut for the next corner there. Okay, so now I've continued the welting all along to here and stopped right there flush where the cow band will go back over. Okay, so next in order to punch the holes, uh, I have a white uh, wax pencil I got a Hobby Lobby that I think will work. And I'm just going to poke the wax pencil through the holes and mark the holes so that then when I take this, sorry about my finger, so that when I take the um, welting off, I can use those uh, marks to punch the holes. Okay, now rolling this over, you can see the white pencil mark. And I'll just use a set of my leather punches punch the holes okay now I'm going along the bottom rim and punching holes every so often to tie a cord or a string to to be able to adjust it finally when I get it in position okay so I actually went back on the friction tape and just pulled the uh, tape off and just punched it with a set of regular hole punches to make it all nice and neat make sure that I got a good round. Okay, so Mark Moran and Eric Winninger brought something to my attention that the welting needs to be painted the actual body color of the tank. So I can't, uh, originally it would have been painted in the car all at one time, but I don't have that benefit because I'm beyond that now. So maybe if you're at this point, you would be best to do that. But for me, I'm gonna actually mask the whole tank and lay the welting in place and pin it with clothespins then I'm going to paint the welting then we're going to one by one pull the clothespins out and pull the bag out from under it so that we don't distort this and crackle that paint okay so the first primer coat went really good Okay, after the night, it is all cured, and it seems to have some springiness to it, which I'm afraid to move it very much. So we'll try to start pulling this plastic off. Okay, so we're very gingerly taking these clips off and sliding the uh, plastic through, hoping not to crack the uh, paint on the welting.
Renee's the one that came up with this idea, so she's the one that gets to pull it out very carefully. So now we've got the plastic pulled out of the way and I'm going along at all these holes I've punched and I'm taking a little piece of fishing line and I'm tying it to the extra holes so that I can adjust it once we get it in the cow. Now the fun Hold part's going to be to take the, the clothes pins off and then get it into the cow. So in order to transfer it from here over to the car, Without the clothespins, Renee got a great idea just to use double-sided tape. So we'll see how that works. As anticipated, it's this corner part here inside the cow that's giving the trouble. So we're pulling our strings and we're trying to finagle with it. I'm using my knees to pop it up and we're just going back and forth real slow to try to adjust it. Bend this piece or just maybe Get yours in first. Grind that off a little bit or something. Get yours in first and see if this one's good. Then, mm -hmm. then when you got it. And I'm scratching paint off with this thing now. You're close to that screw going in that hole. Try that screw. That might be. I think if it comes forward a little bit, the screw might go in. Hit that hole so I'll get it away. Yeah. So okay, so after much sweat, tears, and blood, we were able to get this thing in here as best as we could and then get the belt rail back on with the welt fitting right up against that. So I haven't got any screws in it yet except for the two on the belt rail. So on this side, I'll show you um, how the welt looks on mine. It's not perfect, but it is in there. It was not easy. It took three of us to do it. Uh, one of us sitting in there on the passenger seat using our knees to bounce it up. And I think the trick for us was we found is one side would fit in quickly and easily while the other side would bind. So what we had to do is to communicate between the two of us and make sure we kind of went in both at the same time together. And then all this here especially wanted to buckle so it just takes a lot of anguish but it finally settled down into place all right so the next thing to do is to reattach all the screws or the bolts i mean underneath of here underneath of the cow so i've just got the first one in place so for my model a it's the uh, these screws here I got these from Smith & Jones out of Columbia, South Carolina. It's the A-9001A. And uh, these actually go up to a mid-1930. So these are like a, a quarter by uh, 23 on these here, three quarters of an inch long. 